שלום, 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 everybody. שלום, everybody. שלום, שלום, children of God. Let me um, welcome you all tonight in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me welcome everyone. Let me welcome the commanding the morning family commanding the morning family. I welcome you all this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ um, as we are here to pray. Okay, so kindly share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. I'm also doing the same on my side. Um, share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Share the broadcast as I am doing the same on my side. Okay, it's good to see everyone who's joining in. I'm so um, happy and excited to see everybody who is joining in right here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I am so, so excited and I want you to know that I love you all with the love of God. In Jesus' name, I have my Namibian family. It's right here online. I see Tutaleni is right there. Um, I see Zambia. Zambia is also online. Zambia is also online. Okay, who else is right there? I see Prince Jelle. Good morning. Um, Diana Kilonzo. Good morning. Good morning. Let me welcome you all once again as we are right here to command the morning. As we are right here to command the morning. Let me welcome you one more time in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to know I want you to know that uh, even tonight is uh, going to be a very, very uh, special night for somebody. Even tonight is going to be a very, very special night for someone. I don't know where you are watching from. I don't know where you are seeing me from, but I want you to know that it's going to be a very, very special night in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now, let us share the broadcast as many times as possible. I'm also doing the same on my side as we are getting ready to command the morning. I see my brother is Netemba Vincent Schala. <laughs> oh my God, it's good to see you, my brother. May God bless you. We have made a commitment to God that every night at 12 midnight, irrespective of our um, uh, different communities and different uh, societies where we come from, we have made it a commitment that every night at midnight we come live and we gather to pray. We have people who join us uh, from different parts of the world, like the kingdom of Eswatini is online. I see somebody says I'm watching from Nigeria. Zambia is online. Mm -hmm. Botswana is online. Okay. Okay. So... We are commanding the morning. We are commanding the morning. We are here to command the morning. It's good to see you. Lungi Stofile. It's good to see you. We are here to command the morning. Now, as you know, before we get down to it, I see uh, somebody all the way from UK as well watching. Before we get down to it, share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Just go on your, um, as, as you're watching, look for a share button. Click the share button and tag whoever that you want to tag. Mention them in the uh, comment right there and let them know that we are live. It's good to see uh, Todd Klang all the way from Botswana. God bless you. Okay, just go on the share button, click the share button, share the broadcast so that we may be able to reach out to as many people as possible in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Now share, 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 click the share button Share with a friend, share with a brother. Tell a friend to tell a friend and tell a sister to tell a sister that we are alive. We are here to command the morning. Today, we have a very, very important subject that I am going to look at by the special grace of God, which is God is not a monster. God is not a monster. On today's um, edition, on today's session of commanding the morning, we are talking about a subject that I believe 
it is going to benefit as many people as possible who are watching me tonight in Jesus' name. I have titled tonight's uh, message that I'm going to give to you before we get down to the uh, prayer time. Uh, God is not a monster. Now, God is not a monster. God is not a monster. That is the title of uh, the message that I shall be bringing to you tonight by the special grace of God. God is not a monster. God is not a monster. God is not a monster. Oh my God. God is not a monster. God is not a God of fear. You know, he has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of a sound mind. Now, that is where you begin to realize that we are not supposed to fear anything. Fear must never be our portion. Now, share the broadcast one more time. Share the broadcast one more time. Share the broadcast one more time in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And uh, also make it a point that as you are watching from wherever you're watching from, don't forget to follow the page. Just go on the follow icon and click that icon. Follow me on this page. It is my official page. And if you are going to catch up uh, with this uh, broadcast, maybe on YouTube, uh, kindly subscribe to the channel. This is the new channel that we're going to be using from to, uh, from now onwards. We have been using it for some months now. So uh, kindly subscribe to the channel so that um, you may be well updated with, with everything that... Um, I am going to be doing by the special grace of God. It's good to see um, Yvonne all the way from, uh, I don't know which country is that. Uh, somebody says China is online. So we also have people uh, who are watching us from China tonight. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So let us get down to the word of the day. God is not a monster. God is not a monster. Oh, my God. This is a subject that I believe is going to benefit a lot of people who are watching us tonight. Uh, I don't know where you are tuning in from. USA, um, KZN. I see KZN is online as well. Okay, this is a subject that is going to help you. Tonight, I want us to have a conversation. But if any conversation we are going to have Henceforth, it is a conversation that is going to be in alignment with the scriptures. God is not a monster. There are certain things, certain practices that we have gotten used to within the boundaries of the church. Certain practices that we have gotten so used to now within the boundaries of of the church. Certain things that if you begin to look at, they now have an appearance of looking like they are correct and they are right simply because of their long existence. And now the fact that something has been existing and working for other people for the longest time does not mean that it is now true. We are going to go to the scriptures and quickly see what God has in store for us today in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to read the Bible from the book of Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And if you have your Bible, let's all go to Exodus chapter 20. I'm going to read verse number 5 and verse number 6. The Bible says, You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Let me see. I would like us to really have a proper look at this uh, scripture right here. Uh, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. You know, we are in the generation of phones and all that. So we we are able to, to just, uh, everything is just one click away, one touch away. Okay. Which uh, makes life a bit easier. 
I'm going to read actually from the book of Exodus chapter 20. I'm going to read from um, verse number one going down. The Bible says, and God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of the slavery. You have no other gods before me. That's what the Bible says. You have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth or in the waters below. You shall not make any image that looks like God. Now, it makes me to just wonder, you know, I'm not here to, uh, you know, start any problem with anyone. But it makes me to begin to wonder now when we begin to ask questions like, okay, so the images that we see in the Roman Catholic, that they have made us to believe that uh, the white man hanging in the Catholic Church is Jesus Christ. Now, which puts everybody in a position where we begin to uh, question certain things that we have seen over the years. Now, they've been in existence for the longest time, but uh, their existence for the longest time does not uh, validate, you know, whatever that we are talking about right here. You see, the scripture, Exodus chapter 20, this is God speaking. And this is God addressing his people. He is not uh, talking to a third party. He is not uh, talking to, uh, you know, through uh, five people. This is God communicating what he wanted everyone to know. Now, this is God speaking and he says, You shall not have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. Now, this is the scriptures. And now I begin to ask questions like, uh, you see, when, when we, we, we see our brothers and sisters, I saw a picture the other day of, a, you know, a group of uh, young girls and uh, boys. They were bowing down before a statue that is believed to be the Holy Mother Mary of the Roman Catholic Church. They were bowing down in front of an image, <clears throat> expecting an image to forgive their sins. They were bowing down in front of an image that was made by things that they saw with their own eyes. Now imagine the kind of ignorance that we have in Africa. The Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Now lack of knowledge right there, the Bible clarifies it and it says, my people perish because of ignorance. Now, you are not going to perish because of sin. You are going to perish because of ignorance. Now, ignorance is the lack of information. For to be informed is to be reformed. And to be uninformed is to be deformed. Now, lack of information leads to a place of deformation. And it is those with more information who will always rule over those who are less informed. So because of ignorance and because of lack of knowledge, we see our brothers and sisters bowing down before idols. And they are praying day in and day out before idols. But the Bible says, you shall not make for yourself an image. Now, anything that looks like an image, it is prohibited according to the scriptures. So, those who bow down before images and they are praying to certain images, which God are they praying to? Glory be to Jesus. The title of my message tonight is God is not a monster. God is not a monster. God is not a monster. Now let, let us go down with the word and hear what the Bible says. Okay. The Bible says, You shall not bow down before them and you shall not worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. 
The Lord our God is a jealous God. When the Bible says thou shalt not make any images, thou shalt not have any other God. When the Bible says thou shalt not bow down to any idols. It is not simply talking about also situations where you go and you bow down before a physical idol and you kneel down to it and you submit. The Bible says my people perish because of ignorance. 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 So at times, now look at this. At times bowing down to idols is not necessarily you going to bow down before something. But an idol is something that takes the position of God. Because men were created to worship God. Men were created to worship God. The Bible says, if these do not worship me, then I will raise stones to give me praise and to worship me. Because the Bible says, now God dwells in our praises. Now, when we praise him so good, we create a dwelling place for God and he dwells. It is our praises that creates the atmosphere for the dwelling place of God. Now, you and I, we were not created for any other things, but we are created simply to worship God. That is why the day you find yourself not worshiping him, you must know that you are now living outside your purpose. And if you find yourself living outside your purpose, you must know that you are just as good as dead. For it is the atmosphere, the presence of God, that you are always supposed to be found in, that creates a conducive environment for you to survive. Oh my God, you are like a fish. Once you take a fish outside the water, you can never expect that fish to leave because it is the environment called water that creates life for the fish. Which environment are you found in, in your life? Is it creating a conducive environment to give you life for it is giving you death? Now, once you are outside the purpose of God, you are dead. Oh my God. Oh my God. So at times, now look at this, at times idol worship or idolatry is not simply you going to bow down before a deity. It is not simply you going to bow down before a higher power or a higher force. But idolatry is having something replacing the presence of God. Now, when something replaces the presence of God, then idolatry comes into play. That is why at times when God gives you a car, when God gives you a car, oh my God, and you find yourself adoring the car and spending most of your time focusing on who to visit, who to go to, who to go to, who God will take away the car because he's a jealous God. So at times, certain things that we lose in our lives, it is because God is a jealous God. That which you give much of your attention to and it takes up the time that you're supposed to be using, spending in the presence of God. Be careful, it might also become an idol. And God is a jealous God. So many relationships, some of you have, you have lost. You did not lose them because he was not a good man. Oh yeah, let me talk to somebody right here. You did not lose some of the relationships because he was a bad man. You did not lose them because you were bad. You simply lost them simply because they were taking up the place that you were supposed to to be using spending in the presence of God because he is a jealous God. He is a jealous God. He is a jealous God. There, is, now, there must never be anything that seeks to replace the presence of God. There must never be anything that seeks to replace the power of God. It simply becomes idolatry. Now, if you look at when Moses was up the mountain and the Bible says Moses 
was uh, 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 receiving the law from God. And as he was receiving the law from God, Aaron was down with the church and the church made a golden calf and they began to bow before the golden calf. They manufactured something that they used to substitute the presence of God. Now, idolatry is not only when you have something that you bow down to, but idolatry is when you have certain things that you keep around you and they take you away from the presence of God. That becomes your idol. So certain things that you are losing in your life, you are not losing them simply because God is punishing you or God wants you to go through something. No, he is a jealous God. You were created simply to be a worshiper. You were created because, listen, worship is not about the sweetness of the voice. But worship is all about the brokenness of the spirit. Worship is not about how sweet and smooth your voice is. But worship is all about breaking yourself before the Lord. Opening up your spirit and giving him your all. Now, that is worship. Now, he says, you are created only to worship him. Oh, my God. If these ones do not worship me, I will raise stones. God will not raise stones as long as you and I, we are here. We shall lift up the name of God. We shall lift up the name of Jesus. In every corner, in every city, everywhere, we shall open our mouths and we shall worship him. Because he is the Lord. He deserves all the glory and he deserves all the honor. Now watch this. Verse number 7. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless misuses his name. Okay, the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God on it. You shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing, residing in your towns shall do anything. I'm talking about God is not a monster. God is not a monster. Now, verse number 12, the Bible says, Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to him. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in the smoke and, the, and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen. Now listen to this. The Old Testament, if you follow it quite well, okay, now let me uh, just begin to uh, take you through a few things. Oh my God, okay. Now let me begin to take you through a few things that I really want to share with you that are very important tonight. In the book of Exodus, God is simply giving to Moses that which he expects from mankind. And now this is the Old Testament where God is speaking and he is saying, Go and tell the children of Israel, they must not, 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 they must not murder. They must not commit adultery. They must not covet. They must keep the Sabbath day. They must honor their fathers and their mothers. They must honor their parents. They must live in harmony with each other. They must, they must, they must. Now, and then they must not. So in simple terms and in simple words, 
God was simply giving the law to Moses and saying, go and present the law to my people. Now, many people think God is a monster because of what they read about God in the Old Testament. According to what I'm going to share with you tonight, I want to open your eyes just a little bit. Because you had God in the Old Testament saying, I kill those who do not keep the law and I keep those who keep the law, made you think that this God is a monster. But because you are a spiritual baby and you are a spiritual child, there are certain things that you will never understand because your understanding of the things of God, they are so minute and shallow. <laughs> oh my God. Now in the Old Testament, God gives the law to Moses and he says to Moses, go and deliver the law to my people. This law that I'm giving to you is how I'm going to govern them. And the wages of sin is death. Anybody who does not keep the law is going to die. The wages of sin is death. So not keeping the law is the sin. And the wages of not keeping the law is to die. So according to the Old Testament, anyone who breaks the law does not deserve to live, but he deserves to die. So as long as you do not keep the law, now I want you to understand this as well. That the law of the law simply says if you break one law, you have broken all of them. And if you keep one law, you have kept all of them. Oh my God. You break one, you've broken all. And now you cannot tell me that if you are still in that moment of following the law, you are only selective on the kind of laws that you follow. Because if you are going to follow everything about the law, then everything that you do in your life must be controlled by the law. Now, when I say God is not a monster, I'm trying to say God is not a killer. There is no way God can be so much of a monster that he creates hell for you. His child that he loves and he creates a place called hell so that you can go, you may go and rot in hell. How do you think as a father when he's looking at you, bending in hell, he's going to feel? The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal and everlasting life. Now one thing you must understand, now Jesus is your passport and your ticket to eternity. Jesus is the passport to eternity. For God so loved the world, he loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe, underline the word believe. Underline the word believe. Whoever shall believe, the only thing that you need to do for you to stop looking at God as a monster is to believe in the son of the living God. Jesus comes and he says, I and my father are one. And Jesus also comes and he says, you cannot get through to the father unless you come through me. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, and the life, these are not things you read about. You cannot read about the truth. You have to know the truth. You cannot read about the way. You have to know the way. You cannot read about life, but you have to know the way. And the truth, the way, and the life, they are summed up in one name. And that name is Jesus. He is the truth. He is the way. And he is the life. So if you need life and you don't have life and you are dead, the solution is Jesus. If you are lost and you are looking for the way, the solution is Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. He is the life that you need in your life. So now look at this. In the Old Testament, God gives to Moses the law. Now understand, I said the other day that uh, sin, the word sin, it simply means um, transgression against the law. So when you sin, you are not sinning against God. Listen. <laughs> when you sin, get me right. When you sin, you are not sinning against God. But sin 
is simply transgression against the law. So it is the arrival of law that gave birth to sin. Because when you sin, you are not sinning against God, but you are sinning against the law. Are you getting, the, are you getting this? Now, <laughs> somebody is getting lost already. Sin is transgression against the law. So the fact that there is law simply means there is sin for they go hand in hand. There is no sin without law and there is no law without sin. Now that is Old Testament. So if you are living under the law, you are a sinner. By nature, because anything that is related to the law is sin. When God saw that there is no one in the whole world who is able to keep the laws that he gave to the children of Israel, he realized, I need to send a better sacrifice. Because the sacrifice of the lambs and the gods is not doing the work. But I need to send something that is stronger than just the blood of a god. I need to send something that is stronger than just the blood of the lamb. There is something that must go and represent mankind in this world. When God saw that it is not working, when God saw that no matter how much men are trying to run away from sin, they will always fall into another sin, then God said, I will send Jesus. I will send Jesus and Jesus will come and die for everyone who is a sinner. So now if you are in Christ, you are now a new creation. And there is no way you can be in Christ and you are not righteous. Because Jesus is the righteousness of God and that righteousness of God is what dwells inside of you. So you are righteous simply because you have Jesus in you. Your righteousness is not measured by the amount of works that you do. Because if your righteousness has to be measured by the works, then it simply means no one is righteous. Because as a human being, it is human to err. It is human to make mistakes. You make mistakes every day. So you are not righteous because of the mistakes you made and the perfections that you have done. Your righteousness is not about how many people you gave money yesterday. Your righteousness is not about how many people you are giving food on a daily basis. But your righteousness is because of a name and a man who lives inside of you. And his name is Jesus. They call him Christ, the anointed one. He lives in you. And because the, uh, uh, Christ, the anointed one, lives in you, therefore you are anointed. So when the Bible says, touch not the anointed ones and do my prophets no harm, they are not talking about apostles, bishops, pastors. They are talking about you because you are anointed. You are the anointed one because Christ is in you. You are the anointed one because Christ lives in you. Oh my God. Now there are people who think God is a monster. Because of how they understood God from the Old Testament. <laughs> now I want you to move with me. When Jesus comes into the picture, Jesus comes and he says, I have not come to abolish the law, but I have come as a fulfillment of the law. Moses told you, but I have come as a fulfillment of what you had. So Jesus is the fulfillment, the entire fulfillment of the plan of God regarding mankind. So Jesus is the completeness. Jesus is the completion of the work of salvation. He is the completion of the mind of God. Jesus is the manifestation of the mind of God in this world. If you want to know what God has in store for you, you have to use Jesus as a mirror to see the plans that God has for you. And the Bible says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans not to kill, plans not to destroy, but plans to give you life. But not only life, but life in abundance. It is called the Zoe kind of life. That is the life that God intends for you. 
May you have the Zoe life in the name of Jesus. Wherever you go, everywhere you go, in everything you do, may you have the Zoe kind of life in the name of Jesus. It is a life of abundance. It is a life of abundance. Now, those are the plans that God has for you. How can a God who says, I've got plans not to kill you, not to harm you, not to hurt you, but I've got plans to give you life. And life has been given to us in form of Jesus. We were dead in sin, but when Christ came, we lived in life in him. Oh my God. May you have the Zoe kind of life wherever you are watching from. In the name of Jesus. As we are commanding the morning this morning, we declare and we decree that this morning shall be a morning of gladness. This morning shall be a morning of good news. This morning shall be a morning of good things. This morning shall be a morning, oh my God, of good health. There shall be no bad words that shall land on your ear in the name of Jesus. As we are commanding this morning, we declare and we decree that your ways are open in the name of Jesus. Everything that you desire, it is granted in the name of Jesus. Now watch this. The same God who wants you to have the Zoe kind of life, how can he be the same God that you look at as a monster? Many people look at God and they say, God, oh no, God does not want tattoos. Oh no, God does not want women to wear weaves. Oh no, God does not want women to preach. Oh my God. Oh no, God does not want you to say those words. No, 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 God does not want you to dress like that. No, no, no. God does not want you to do that. No, God does not want you. Now, listen to me and listen to me very well. If you say women are not supposed to preach, if you say women are not supposed to preach, I'm pretty sure that you are using the instance of uh, Paul. When Paul was addressing the church in Corinth, and Paul was addressing the issue of women standing in front. Now, that was a message that was sent to a specific church. Now, show me where else does the word say women are not supposed to preach. Now, if you say women are not supposed to preach, it simply says you are holding on to the Old Testament. So, you must also keep the Sabbath. You must also keep the Old Testament. You must also make sure that because once you keep the law, the blood of Jesus does not work for you. I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus does not work for those who are keeping the law. Because if you are keeping the law, then it's the blood of the gods that is supposed to work for you. The blood of the animals is the one that works for those who keep the law. The blood of Jesus is the one that works. For those who have made God their father, not a monster. Those who look at God and they say, God, when I relate with you, I don't come before your presence trying to be something that I'm not. I don't come before your presence pretending to be something that I'm not. I don't come to you trying to please you because I'm afraid of you. But I come to you, everything that I do is because I love you. Now, if God is a monster to you, it simply means everything that you do and you say it's for him. You are not doing it because you love him. You are doing it because you are afraid of him. You are supposed to do things for God because you love God. Now, let me remind you. Now, all the monies that you have been giving to church, if you were giving them with the mindset that you love God, not because you wanted to be seen, they would have worked for you. <laughs> If the monies you were giving to the pastor, they were for the... Oh my God. If you were giving simply because you loved God, you were going to see the results. Because according to the grace nation, when we live under the grace, when we live under the grace, we have said goodbye to the law. And 
It simply means sin does not exist anymore. You didn't hear what I said. The existence of sin ceased to exist the day that we started living under the grace because sin is simply not keeping the law. So if we leave the law and we are now under the grace, it simply means I'm not a sinner anymore. So I don't know the kind of measuring stick that you are using to measure my sins because according to the God that you think you know, I'm not a sinner, but I'm his child because my sins ceased to exist the day that I accepted that I'm a sinner, but I believed in my heart that he is the Lord of Lords. Now, our God is not a God who has to remember your faults. If God could remember your faults, you would have been dead by now because there are so many bad things that you have done, but God has still kept you alive. Now, I want you to hear this and hear this very well. <laughs> oh my God. I wish I was preaching to people who really understand what I'm trying to say right here. Now, I want you to realize that Oh my God, 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 oh my God. Now look at this. When you live under the grace, you are now living the Zoe life, the life of abundance. And now, the Bible says there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So, why do you condemn me for what you had? Because last night you were not with me. When I prayed and I called upon the name of Jesus, and I called upon the blood of Jesus. Why then do you condemn a brother who's next to you? Because last night you were not with him. The sins you saw him do. Jesus asked a question and he said, I understand you caught her in the act, but hear me and hear me well. Let the first person who knows he has no sin, let him be the first one to cast the stone. I understand you caught her in the act because the difference between me and you is that I was caught in the act and you haven't been caught as yet. But <laughs> Jesus says, okay, you the ones who haven't been caught, but the fact that you haven't been caught in the act does not mean that you are not a sinner. You have your own sins, but the difference is that this one the sins are in the public and your sins are in the private. And Jesus simplifies the matter. And he says, the one who feels like he does not have a sin, let him be the first one to cast the first stone because they believed in those days that anybody who is caught in the act must be stoned to death. Huh? And Jesus said, let the one who does not have a sin be the first one to cast a stone. None of the people who were chasing the woman after they caught her in the act, were able to cast a stone because the other brother who was sitting there remembered that before he caught the woman in the act, he was also in the act somewhere in private. The fact that nobody saw him does not mean that he is perfect. The other father and the other sister were there. As they were about to cast their first stones, they also remembered that, oh my God, I also did this in the private. Nobody saw me. I would have been the one to be stoned to death right now. What is it that made people not to see me? Maybe that which made people not to see me is the one that is also supposed to make me not to stone this sister to death because me and the sister are the same, but the difference is that the sister's sin is in the public and my sin is in private. God is not a monster. God is not in the business of trying to remember everything that you have done. 
He's not in the business of trying to remember and come and remind you. Only the devil has got the tendency of seeing when you are about to do great exploits in your life. When your life is about to be transformed for the best, the devil comes. He reminds you of your past. He reminds you of your mistakes. He reminds you of your sins. He reminds you of everything that you have ever done in your life. And then after reminding you, you lose it. The God that we serve is a father. He's a father to the fatherless. He's the husband to the widows. He cares and he loves. That is the God that we serve. Gone are the days when we used to be scared. Gone are the days when we used to be scared. We are not scared anymore. Because we know this is our father. We approach him with love. Everything we do for him, we do it with love. Everything that we do for God, we do it with love. I declare and I decree as you are watching me right now. God is your father. And if you are saying, man of God, I've heard your sermon. I've been living a life of condemnation. I've been condemning myself. I've been condemning myself for everything that I do. Everything I've ever done. All the sins I've ever committed. If there were no sinners. What was the point for the blood of Jesus to be shed? If there were no sinners like you, if there were no sinners like me, what was the point for the blood of Jesus to be shed? The blood was, of Jesus was shed for people like you and myself. So if you are here and you're saying, man of God, I'm tired of self-condemnation. I want you wherever you are just to lift up your hands, close your eyes, and repeat after me. And say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I confess with my mouth that I'm a sinner and I have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But even though I have sinned, I believe in my heart that you are the Lord of Lords king of kings, the Lord of glory. You died so that I may live. Therefore, there is no condemnation. In Jesus' name, Amen. Oh my God, if you prayed that prayer, you have just prayed the most powerful prayer ever. What you were before you prayed this prayer is not what you are right now. All the sins, all the things you did before you prayed this prayer, it has been forgiven. That is how much God loves you. That's how much God loves you. And it doesn't end there. If you want somebody to talk to, if you want somebody to hold your hand, if you want somebody to talk to, if you want somebody to pray with you, I'm making that commitment to pray with you. I'm making it my commitment to pray with you. I'm going to pray with you. We are going to pray together. Get in touch with me. This is my phone number, plus two seven seven eight eight three two seven eight two five zero seven eight eight three two seven eight two five zero seven eight eight three two. 7825. Get in touch with me. Let me pray together with you. I love you so much with the love of God. I'll see you tomorrow at the same hour as we are commanding the morning. Shalom.